potentially dangerous. Restart, and I'm like, <laughs> and I would just do it again. <laughs> and then, like, I would do it again. Like, Dude, I I'm like, yo, I, roll over. I rode legs. Oh, I Holy now. shit. Oh. There he is, Chael P. I see somebody. Holy shit. Chael, if you go long. What's happening, guys? If you go long ways, you'll get all of us. Sorry about that. Let's try it. Let's try it. How's that? There we go. Oh, this, so this is the big time. Boom. This is the big time. <laughs> Boom. What's up, dudes? Chael, I'm trying to be like you. I'm going to put on. That's, um, yeah. I'm, I'm putting on my that, own uh, fight slash grappling oh, re- match. Respect. When and where? We're doing it April 11th at the Melrose Ballroom. <laughs> Very cool. I want to know about tag team grappling matches. So fun. Oh, my gosh. It's so fun. So, I mean, look, it's exactly what you would think, right? It started off like as a gimmick, kind of like something fun, something to be silly. Four guys get in there. You've, you, you've got a tag team. Each corner has a little rope in it, six inches long. One guy has to be holding the rope. He can't move from there. But if his partner can get to him and tag him while he's still touching the rope, it's fair play. Now, here's the way the rule was set. You have, if you tag, you have three seconds to be out, which means you have to be holding the rope. That was designed exactly why it sounds. So a guy would get out of there and the partner would come in. Well, what the athletes quickly found out is, no, I have three seconds to double team the other guy. Oh, and so, wow. And the referee <laughs> let it go. The referee goes, there's nothing I can do. The rules say he has three seconds if they, if they, Pull on another guy and put him in a precarious position, but can still get to the rope in three seconds. It's fair game. So you, you literally have some of the baddest dudes in the world going two on one with some of the baddest dudes in the world. Yeah, that's what we're looking now, to do. Now, real quick, on record, do I have your permission to to do this? Hundred percent. Oh yeah, you want the rule okay. set? Take it and run, man. Take it and run. Okay. I'll, I'll happily email it to you. Okay. In fact, Dennis, I'll tell you this. I would prefer it if you took the exact rules because one thing that bothers me in grappling, and I think you will agree, every time somebody starts a grappling organization, they come up with their own rules. Right. It's like some kind of ego thing. Like this is my show and it's my rules. It's like yeah, but guys, House all rules. we're doing is confusing. <laughs> yeah, we're confusing the fans. Right. Like you know. On basketball, any court in the world, you don't have to explain the rules. You put the you put the ball in the basket, you get two points. Like it's it's insane that grappling can't all agree. So I would love it if you took the rules. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, Chris, do I mean me and Chris will come do a tag team show? I think. Uh, what we gotta come to Oregon or California? You gotta come to Portland. You gotta come to Portland, Chris. Oh, we could do this. I yeah. mean, Bro, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. I didn't awesome. know you were running tag teams. Oh That's yeah, amazing. he's one of the first. Wow. Well, by, even, by the I way, I gotta that. give I gotta give you guys a compliment. That's a good looking studio. Is that soundboard behind you? By the way, is it that, is. Is that help soundproof through? It's cool looking, yeah, man. I've never you. seen soundboard in a design. I like yeah. that. Yeah, it, we it, got we got sponsors. We got the you know the shore mics. We you know we went all in, right? All in or nothing. If you're going to do it, man, right. let's do it. And you guys look fantastic. Thank you. It depends on who you ask. It's a couple thousand dollar studio or it's a three million dollar studio. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But, I know that. Believe me. I know the drill. Yeah. <laughs> so Chael Sonnen, officially welcome to Menace and the Man. I'm Stan the Man, Menace's co-host. You know Chris Wade, right? Of course. And obviously, you know, Dennis the Menace Mutas. Now we're joined by of course. MMA legend Chael Sonnen. Tell him. I mean, there it is. There's the four of us. What do we do now? Where what? do we take it from here, boys? I mean, we're gonna we're gonna throw questions at you. I mean, you're you're doing it all. You're doing you have a podcast. You have you're doing ESPN. You're you're all over the map. How do you? I'll you have kids. You. They're your father too, right? Yeah, man. I got two little two little terrorists that live in my house, and they find a way to break <laughs> at least one thing a day. I swear to you, I come home every day looking forward to playing with them, and it turns into me just getting out screwdrivers and tools and fixing stuff all night uh. long, but. I, it's still worth it. How old? I, you have, you have two boys, right? How old? I got one boy and I got one little princess. Okay. Okay. The so, boy's more the maniac. What are the ages? Four four years for the boy and two for the girl. Okay, because Chris has a daughter. I've got Congrats, two boys. Chris. I've got two boys. I got, what, five and seven and your daughter's? Six. Yeah. Yeah, so well, they're right there on top of each other. No but kids that I know about, Joe. It's, it's night and day. <laughs> Respect. Between the two boys and her. Oh, man. But I love when they mesh together. It's it's great because she, they take her a little bit out of her comfort zone where she's a little more <laughs> yeah. timid. 
And uh, she tones them down a little bit, too. Right. And I got to tell you guys, I've only had one disappointment as a parent, which was Christmas morning when my son was two. I did not know. Nobody ever told. I thought every kid in the world loved Christmas and knew all about it and wanted to get presents and candy and all this stuff. My kid was scared to death. We tried to tell him this guy came down the chimney and put all these. <laughs> He's like, wait, we got together. robbed? It, it freaked him out. And then he wanted to call. I was like, well, if you just come over here, like he had a little corner. I was like, this is the Pharaoh corner. You know, this, this was the tradition I was trying to say. And I stayed up all night. I had to put this little workstation together. It had his name on it and a place to sit and these like fake tools and fake. It was great. It was it was awesome. He screamed and threw a fit. I had no idea. Uh. I thought kids knew. <laughs> Man. Now Halloween. Halloween he got from day one. The very first day he knocked on a door and they handed him a Snickers bar. He was in on Halloween. Yeah, he sold. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're his that. father. He's a pretty logical guy. I gotta tell you, I mean, I was doing my best. I was doing my level best to reason with this guy, but there were so many things that people think we will know as parents that we don't know. Nobody ever tells us some of the most obvious things. Like, why did nobody mention this to me? So, real quick, one of the most logical men, probably in the universe, definitely yeah. in the oh, sport of a man. Like, so you get asked all the time: Is your son gonna wrestle? Is he gonna do? Is he gonna fight? What's the answer to that, and why? Well. Those are the sports that I like, but I mean, my job will just be to be a chauffeur, whatever he chooses. And I want to expose him to a whole lot of things. You know, Dennis, I think you would agree with me. Like, it's really important that you find your sport. For sure. And yeah, we got some great athletes in MMA, but they don't go that far. But if they would have been in a different sport, who knows how far? I mean, we have some really great athletes, but it's just not totally their sport. And so it's kind of important that a kid sees a whole bunch of things and then gets an interest. And I just view myself, I just view my job as, uh, you know, I got to pay the dues, of course. I'm dead. I got whatever the fee is, but then I got to get him there. And I'm a coach myself. I, I, I'm in my truck right now. I just walked out of practice. I have such a great time coaching these kids, except for the damn parents. The parents mm. drive me crazy. Yeah. And I try to tell yeah. these guys, you are not their coach. I am their coach. You bring them to me. I will teach them a skill, and I'll send them home tired. But that's the deal. Yeah. There's yeah. no other deal. I don't want to hear about how all these things make you feel and all these great plans that you have. Because I don't bring care about your feelings. Me. Or go trust somebody else. If you don't trust me with your kid, go trust somebody else. But this is the deal. Yeah, we got a guy over here that plays. I teach him a skill. I send him home tired. Yep. Sounds pretty fair to me. Because Chris, how many how many wrestling dads have you seen? Like Uh, the kids crying. You're like, dude, you're fucking murdering for this kid. I'm gonna be honest with you. I I I backed out of the sport a little bit while fighting because of the fact that I have a hard time dealing with a little bit of that. The parents do. Yeah, ton of energy. If they like what Chael said, if they want to trust you and they want to give you um their child to to teach and to get their skills to go to another level and to believe in a work ethic and whatnot that's fine but if they're gonna kind of oversee you tell you how it is after every match what needs to be done then it's like ah man this is too much this is why i'm out of the game right now and i can't do it and i would think that all of us kind of think we're really good at something you know what i mean so like for me if i drop my kid off at wrestling i think i gotta leave yeah. Because I'm like, I fucking... Sure. I, I just... He's not going to listen to me because I'm his father, right? But I think I'm better than that guy. So, yeah. like, don't show my yep. kid the wrong shit. I just got to get the if fuck I'm out of If I'm bringing him to his session, I'm, I'm out of there. Yeah. yeah. You know right. what I mean? And right, but, Dennis, you're being very honest. Dennis, because that is the problem. Where these The dad always thinks he knows best, but the kid never wants to listen to his dad. And even if his dad didn't know... Your dad can be John Smith, or he can be <laughs> Kale Sanderson. You right. don't want to hear from him. I mean, yeah. you just don't. Yep. You just don't want that relationship with dad. You don't want to go home. You're at the dinner table, or you're trying to relax at home, and dad's trying to get up your ass because, you know, you gave up a couple of points in practice. Practice. That's not what dad take him to practice, pick him up from practice and shut your mouth. And it's a hard thing to do. I'm saying it like it's easy. I realize it's going to be hard to do, but that's the deal. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, and she, I'm sure you've seen it growing up and Chris, like growing up, right? The, re- the kids, the, 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 the coach's son is like usually like the, the best. And you're like, the, like there's gotta be something there too, but there's probably like a threshold. Like those guys never become UFC champions. You know, my, they never make the Olympics. My or, high school head coach, his son is my one of my best friends, and he was amazing. Oh, Ryan Patrick, you know the Patrickses. Well, and they just did more. They went to more off no, season things. He was they very good, more. like what Chael said. When practice ended and it was time for dinner, or the friends came over, he just became dad. 
He stopped with the other stuff. He didn't continue on. You know, you gave up that takedown. You really looked flat at practice. It was over. He transitioned his role into father mode away from coach mode, and that's what made him such a successful coach, I think, yeah. and his son so successful. Yeah, and Chris, that's rare. I mean, I've seen that too, but there's a tipping point. You know, there's a tipping point where you're just supportive. If this, if your child comes to you, if he comes to you and says, hey, Dad, you know, I know you used to wrestle. Now I want to – I'm sorry, fellas. I'm sitting in my truck. I'm trying to turn a light on here. You're good. Um, you know, if he comes to you – and say, I know you used to do this, and I wanted to, can you show me some stuff? That's totally different than when you're making the kid do it. I mean, I know some of these dads, they'll be driving home. They're two miles away from home. They pull the truck over and kick the kid out, and the kid's got to run home. Uh, and it's like, <coughs> Gregor. it's one of these things. It's like, yes, that's a great workout. If your goal was to get a workout, you succeeded. But if you have a goal of having your child spend holidays with you when he's an adult and doesn't have to, these stories don't usually end well. And it's weird because there's there's a different type of kid. For example, like Gregor, he's in the UFC, he's doing very well. He knows National Gregor champion, Gillespie. Gregor Gillespie. Like his father, like he would like tech a kid is that like you should have pinned him. Like run home. Or like win by eight points in the finals. And like he'd go up with the little father's like, do not give him a ride home. And then there's, you know, like my dad didn't give one fuck. My dad, I just <laughs> wrestled two min two miles down the road. You missed it. I fucking won. <laughs> You would have been proud. He's like, did you pin him? I'm like, no, I won like 12 to 4. He's like, eh, not good enough. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry your dad wasn't there and be more supportive. Yeah, I don't but, mean to laugh. That's but, hard. No, but the thing was is like I was always trying to impress my father. So that was like my driving. So then when I got to the UFC and went this seven-fight win streak and he hopped on the bandwagon, I was like, get the fuck off. You're you're here too late. Yeah, Dad, you're here too late. I've been telling you this. It's already been done. Yeah, I've been telling you since I was eight. You I, know, I eighth grade. Him telling me one time, and I couldn't figure it out because I you grew up upstate, not down here. I didn't understand the dynamic, and I was like, "Are you coming to the fight?" Because I was cornering you, and he was like, "That's." Ah, it's not a, a like a main event or something like that. I only uh, come to main event. AB was, was telling you this. Yeah, that, yeah, I was like, what? Yeah, and then I was like, I'm not gonna get involved. Here, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like Chris had like a father, but you, your your dad paid for all your tournaments. Was there? Yeah, I mean, drove he rode, you to the tournaments. He rode me uh, about yeah. what went on, but he was there. Yeah. <sighs> And so, Dennis, if, if I may ask, I mean, we're getting a little personal, but I feel like you opened the door. How is your relationship with your dad otherwise? Like, take him with your with your boys. Is he a good grandfather? Yeah, yeah, he's awesome. I um, was raised by my father. Yeah, okay. Right. He's the man. You know? Okay, so, so he was tough just love. busy. Tough but, love, but, if okay, anything. so dad was busy. Yeah, dad be, wasn't being a dick. Right. Dad was busy. Being an adult. Oh, okay. Right, being an adult. He owned his own business, though, and I remember my old brother I'm like, yo, your son's a fucking stud. Like, everyone come to the shop, like, you see your son last night? Like, no. But I get it. He was keeping the lights on and food yeah. on the table. But come on, he he closes at like six. The match might be at five. He owns the business. Shut it down. He had an employee. Your dad keeps it real, and he keeps you grounded. I think a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean. And then we hop on board. Get the fuck <laughs> out of here! I don't believe you. Like you're soft. And his older age sucks. That's funny. You know. That's funny. Get Man. off the bandwagon. That's a funny line. I uh. like that. And then he has many great stories with his dad involving MMA. Like one you told last week was when you first started fighting. He was uh, like, Dennis, I've seen these other yeah. fighters. I don't know about you. I was like 3-0 and pro. And I was, you know, amateur 4-0. and And, I, you know, I had all finishes. And my dad's like, hey, Dennis, I think you're really good. Just finished watching UFC. You're good, Dennis. Don't, don't get me wrong. You're good. But, Dennis, these guys... These guys are killers. I was like, hang on. Chill. He called me out of, like, nowhere just to tell me that. I'm like, is that it? He's like, just, I just finished watching. I just want to tell you. I'm like, fuck you. I didn't, hang on. But chill. Chill. I couldn't say fuck you. I was just like, in my head I said it. Of course. In my head of I course. said it. And I was like, thanks, Dad. By the way, fellas, you brought up Gregor a minute ago. There's a there's a rumor going around about him and uh, Islam. Uh, yeah, exactly. How's that there fight any go? Truth on that? Nah, I actually uh, maybe he's lying, but I saw Gregor on Instagram. Someone commented like, "Hey, is there any truth to you versus Islam?" And he just wrote, "No." It's, he said rumor, right? Yeah. Been, uh, How does that fight go? You think? 
I would love to see that fight, but I'm also a big believer in Gregor. Like, people have asked me many times in private, hey, is there anybody that can beat Khabib? And I would always tell him, I go, you know what, as a matter of fact, there's a guy, and you probably haven't heard of him. Yep. He's 8-0, he's undefeated, he's a national champion, his name is Gregor Gillespie. But if there's anybody that matches up with Khabib's skills and can match Khabib's pace and will to win, it's this guy named Gregor Gillespie. And I've had that talk more times behind Gregor's back with more people, yeah. and I still think I'm right about that by the way you but are. you want to know the one person that doesn't appear to agree with me is gregor yeah gregor is handling his career so damn slow he's not demanding anything he's not demanding huge fights huge opportunities i mean this guy was what eight no or nine and no and now he's only got one loss so one loss right i mean dennis come on how jealous would we be you guys only got yeah. one loss I'm not, yeah. i can't cry Six. for a guy with one loss <laughs> right and, yeah. you know, I still look at him and just go, go, Gregor, you're a killer, but you're not getting any younger, man. Let's get after this. Right. Yeah, let's do it. Well, Chael, right. do you know Kyle Sermonara as well? Yeah. Yeah, like uh, they did like a Facebook Live thing. They do like a <laughs> mini podcast or whatever. No, I'm not talking about the call out. Uh, but uh, they did a Facebook Live and they were like, who should Gregor fight next? And I wrote, you should stick to Pettis. Keep going for Pettis. And they wrote like, didn't you see the video Chael did? Like we already yeah. we already went Pettis and it didn't go well. <laughs> No, I think hey, well, that's an amazing fight, though, for Gregor. Yeah, I told him next time put cereal. Put, no, I told you know I told him to cereal. his face. I said put next milk time, in the cereal. Put yeah. milk in the cereal. I said next good. time you do anything, let me know. I think I could come up with something pretty good. The, well, he had another problem when he had called Pettis out. He was he had won. Gregor was still undefeated. Pettis had lost. Plus, Pettis mm. had a hand injury that he made public, and I don't think Gregor heard about. And Pettis had changed weight classes right. and gone up to one seventy. So, at the time yeah. that I gave yeah. Gregor a hard time about that, I had a lot of ammo. I mean, it was the three strike yeah. rule, like baseball, and you're out, <laughs> which is why he didn't get, which is why he didn't get the fight. Yeah. Now, yeah, but that's Gregor, the fight Gregor was it. annoyed with me about that, but I was right. Yeah. Islam and Gregor is well. The, is even the, Islam, that's the fight to me. Chris Wade, the guy right here, is giving Islam probably his toughest fight in the UFC. I, I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah. How does I he agree. feel, by the way, Chris? How does he feel, by the way? Was he got a good pressure? Is is he a pressure fighter? He 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 almost submitted me with that triangle. He had one of those like steel cups on, and he put. But he 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 pulled my glove like into the triangle, and I couldn't. Sure. I couldn't. I couldn't get my. He had it hooked. So he was pulling me into it, and I thought about it for a second, but then I used, like, hammer fist to get out of it. But um, I cornered you for that one, no? He, I don't know how to— Because I remember you, like, hulking out, like, dude, yeah, I don't know how to bad. explain that tight. fight. I think, like, I've seen him do some great things on his feet, but it looked like from the start of the fight he didn't want to strike. He Every time I threw, he shot a shot, and then it turned into some crazy uh, grappling scrambles. Um but his strength, like let's say, you know when you're against the cage, you got your ass against the cage and someone's got like a loose double on you, but they're trying yep. to finish and you, you're you splitting your legs one way or the other. The way he was able to pull my knees in together, lock his hands and pull me away from the cage, his power from there was, I never felt that before. I've never felt that from another 55 pounder. And he's life. going with me, Chael. Sure. <laughs> Believe it he or knows not. strength, right? He's felt strength. I get it. But but Chris, I gotta ask you the specifically pace, specifically the pressure. Yes. Is there a pre like? Can you feel it? Can you go, man? This guy's just coming forward. He's coming at me. Does he? Because you can see that Khabib does that. But does Islam he, do that too? He wasn't. He was going the other way. But then when the grappling would start, you know how scrambles go. If you stay sure. in a prolonged scramble, like a five minute round. I mean, it gets just flat out exhausting. So it would turn into like, I'm trying to choke him. He's out of it. He's on top of me. I swept him. Now he's up. He's out. We're in on a takedown. It just was yes, probably great it energy was, control. It was, yeah, it While was, you're going for a choke, he's like, I'm good here. Go it ahead, was squeeze. Not, yes. His ability to, I choked him three, four times hard. And he never panicked. He found his way out of it. His ability to. Yeah, I want Islam as my tag team partner. <laughs> it, yeah, but there you go. It, it was the body. That'd be fun. It was the body triangle in the third. He once he locked that up, I couldn't get out of his body triangle. That's what locked it up. So sure. our my fight with him was a little bit different than some of the stuff you see. But I think that's what what you were saying that fascinates me, and I always talk to people about is the match with me and him being both grapplers. That's what makes like the most exciting stuff. And for Gregor and Khabib to go at it, that would be oh, like yeah. two of the best grapplers I've ever seen. 
go at it, it would be fireworks because the scrambles you would see would be just a a insane. Yeah. You would have to slow motion and go back and go half speed to understand even what happened. Yeah. After Is it and Khabib is such a competitor, you know, I mean, he puts a pace on you and he wants to win really bad, but that's what I see in Gregor. I mean, I see a yeah. dog in Gregor. Yeah. Gregor we, will put that like, pace. We Gregor's know. not backing down. <laughs> no, we so know. we were... Chris, what seems to be weird, though, fellas, is Gregor isn't out there demanding anything. I mean, the yeah. four of us are sitting here making a bigger case for Gregor than I've ever heard Gregor make for Gregor. Yeah. That part confuses me. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, we've all, us three have all trained a lot with Gregor. Gregor's He's, a savage. He's, He's a different animal. He actually needs a mental coach. He has one a little is bit that in Serum. No, is he no, 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 no. He himself? needs he needs a legit mental coach because the thing is, like, he want like you know wrestling. You just you just win and you advance. In MMA, you know more than anybody. You need to fucking hey, give me the best guy. That not the best guy. Just just I have to go against him. That's actually what I wanted to ask you is because we t we spoke about this before you getting on the air and being wrestlers, right? Coming from the wrestling community, what we're used to is is that hard work, not getting in trouble, right? Busting busting your ass, doing your schoolwork, right? Working on the side, getting doing your, the right thing, getting your hand raised, right? You want to dominate, yes. You want to pin a guy. You want to tech a guy. You want to show them that that you're superior to them. You want to run your way through a tournament, but you were one of the first people I ever saw in wrestling that you you seemed to always get it beyond, and I didn't, beyond, you knew there was more to it than getting your hand raised when you transitioned to MMA. What you're talking about right now, you're saying no one's politicking, he's not politicking for himself, but everyone else is. How How did you figure out so quick that there was so much more to it than just getting your hand raised and using the best, safest style to win. You know, I got to tell you, I think I just saw somebody else do it. Like, I don't think I reinvented the wheel on that. My, my father and I were both big fight fans and wrestling fans. I mean, amateur wrestling. But, you know, I grew up watching Tommy Hearns and Sugar Ray Leonard and even the Mike Tyson era. I, I was around for all of that. And it was just something in boxing that was totally different than amateur wrestling where we came from. You shake hands, you keep your mouth shut, and you walk away. But the boxers were setting things up. They were promoting. And this is before mixed martial arts was around. But the boxers would call somebody out, and then they'd say, why? They wanted to fight him and it didn't always have to be some kind of negative trash what people call trash talk sometimes it was just a challenge sometimes it was an open competitive sometimes it was because you're the champion i've done everything that i need to do and i deserve my opportunity i don't really care what the why is but i do think that the why is important i think that there's you know there's five parts to a story i remember being in third grade and mrs stafford went in front of the class and she wrote it down who what when where and why and fighters often call somebody out or they say when they want to fight but they forget the why. I need to, if you're going to tell me a story, you got to have who, what, when, where, and why. Tell me why this fight matters. If I like the story, man, I get behind it. That's why I didn't get the Frank Yeager fight, huh? I said Frank Yeager, Madison Square Garden. I walked away. I didn't give him a why. <laughs> you're, no, but he, you didn't give him the why. We're looking you have at to say why. Literally, one of the experts. Like yes, the best no, to one ever million percent. In in promoting and in taking it beyond wrestling so that's exactly hey, it chris, i think the why the can why chris, yeah, can chris, chris text you chris. on the side for like <laughs> advice for how to do the pfl hey, well chris, that's different i appreciate that i mean you just gave me a very big compliment i appreciate that but i'll, I'll tell you this because you you guys can certainly relate you'll have these fighters that come out and they're upset and they'll say i'm being under promoted yes but then they stop right there and they never finish and i always want to grab them and just go okay tell me what that means no, no, you said you were under-promoted. Tell me what it means to be promoted. Does that mean you weren't on enough billboards? Does that mean your name wasn't on enough marquees? You weren't on post? What do you think promotion means? Because let me answer that question. All promotion is is storytelling. If you have a story, tell the story. If it's a great story, it means you got a great fight. If it's an okay story, that means it's going to be an okay fight. If it's not a very good story at all, but you gave your best swing at it, you're probably going to be on the undercard. But all promotion is, the great promoters are great storytellers. But in a story, we must have all five W's. And I see fighters leave out all the time. Why? Why are we doing this? It can't just be about unified rules and punching each other in the face. That sounds a little bit too barbaric. Why? Why does this matter? What is on the line here? Why do you want that guy? You tell me why, I'll get behind you. And sometimes the more asinine why is better. 
I agree. I agree. Because he was in the fucking red corner every time. That's why I want to fucking fuck him out. Sure. Yeah. yeah, like the Y can be whatever you want. Just throw yeah. a Y out there. Because it's got a Maserati. Be like articulate, you gotta be but there must be some reason you're oh, calling that guy. Like, guys do that with Connor all the time, but nobody wants to tell the truth, right? Everybody wants to fight Connor because you're going to make a whole bunch of money. Right. If somebody came out and said that, hey, man, you want to know what? I'm three months behind on my house bill. I could pay that whole damn thing off, and Connor would just say yes. Connor, what do you think? You want to change my life? McGregor would probably look at that and go, why the hell not? I mean, it, but it would be something different, trying to call him out the yeah. same way that everybody else calls him out. I'm going to kick your ass. Well, then why would I fight you? If I know for sure you can kick my ass and you're promising me you can't, I'll go find somebody else because I'm looking for a guy that can't kick my ass. I mean, it's just like the it's like the worst approach ever, the whole I'm going to beat you. Well, if I know how the story's going to end, I really don't need to watch the movie. Man. Yes, perfect example, yeah. you versus Anderson Silva. Nobody else gave him any type of disrespect or anything like that. Chael got on the mic and was like, Anderson Silva, you absolutely suck. <laughs> sure, <laughs> everyone monumental. Was like, oh, my God. Yeah. But we uh, created a story, right? Yes, we're just, that's all promotion is. We're just telling a story. We didn't need billboards and marquees and countdown shows. We needed a microphone and a camera. We had it, and we used it. And I appreciate you giving that to me, but, I mean, I will take the credit for it because, I mean, if we're talking about the story of promotion, all we're talking about is telling a story. But don't forget who, what, when, where, and why. why? Yeah, but what So, was... Dio Sanchez has a chance to fight Conor McGregor. Yes. Yeah, yeah, he really does. <laughs> I mean, I'm... The world I'm very light mad, on that. <laughs> I can't imagine that would happen. Right. But, no. But no if Conor McGregor says that's the guy and we're looking to buy a little time before me and Khabib and I don't want to sit out until September, maybe. You watched the maybe. fight, right? You watched the fight this past weekend. Oh, yeah. Watch I texted all. Doc. I was going to say, he texted. I texted Doc at one minute into the first round and said, I'll fight Diego Sanchez at 170. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Hey, Diego's been around a long time, you know, and people are giving him a hard time for stopping that fight. But, I mean, I think we got to take him at his word. If you take an illegal shot, it's it's very much within the rule. That's why the rule right. is there. If you take right. an illegal shot, you can't continue. Right. There's a right. built-in mechanism. I, I really don't think he should be teased. No, I mean, I Diego no. Sanchez is a no. tough son of a bitch. Yes. If he says he was hurt, his word's good enough for me, man. Well, if he <laughs> says he was hurt, I believe him. So, on the contrary, and it happened, I looked at Stan I said, he's too dumb to take the out <laughs> and then he goes my eye my eye, i can't <laughs> see. see like what i am he may there's a really good chance he maybe he can't but he was like can i talk to nah, my corner he could see he was he trying to he get somebody it. else to what i am to find he, out the rule yeah he wanted to find out the rule he wanted None to make sure really know that rule right if he he stopped it that he wouldn't lose himself he wanted to make sure well, it would be it'd be a draw right Sometimes it goes well, back to the to the foul, and then they judge before that. But when because Chris, Chris, do you remember the night where Weidman fought uh, Gegard? Yes. And Gegard cheated. Gegard needed him when he was down, so Weidman goes, "I'm done." Yes. Weidman would win by disqualification, and then something happened. I don't even know what happened, but something happened within that jurisdiction, and they go, "No, not only is it a not a disqualification, it's not even a no contest. You lose by TKO." And all of us are at home going. That can't be right. But no one that. really knows that rule until it's tested because it can be different in each state. That's not part of the unified rules. Uh, the unified rules only uh, carry over to what you can and can't do in the sport. As far as the administrative rule, that can actually change state to state. I don't know that it does, but I don't know that it doesn't. None of us know those rules. Yeah, Chad, totally. that's why I love this sport. And it also makes me boil. Because the thing is, is like, I remember I've been, I fought for 10 years. I don't know what makes you win around or lose around. No clue what they're judging. No one knows. It's got to change. I don't know what makes you get DQ'd or makes you get disqualification. Well, listen, I'll tell or you no what. Or no contest. Sure. Kneeing a guy no in the knows. face on the ground is probably not your best interest. Right. right. I Yeah, I agree. And that guy's a, hang on. That other guy is a goddamn Greek. God. Yeah, but he has the IQ of a house plant right. because he was fouling. <laughs> no, see, he was fouling. You cannot flip and stomp somebody. If that lands, right. you're going to get DQ'd. That's also. why he's like, even. Right. that's why he was the co main event because he does flips and tries to stomp people. And that's what's wrong with the sport. Sure. 100%. Yeah. I could see yeah. that. Because he's trying Chris, so hard you, you to be get... Connor and spin around and do this, that, and the other thing. And But his IQ is a fraction of what All his right. is. 
And he and he's losing fights to Diego Sanchez because he knees him in the face after. Where? You, hang on. Where? Like when you saw that fight coming up, where was your? I'm not saying you put money down, but where would you put it? Was it on Diego because he has the gas that tank? Was stealing money. Was it? Uh, I I I, pro I was not picking Diego in that fight. Neither was I. Yeah, I was. I was not picking. Diego. I mean, because that I guy. Picked Diego. When it comes to confidence and bringing your balls with you and going yeah. and getting a fight, I mean, he he's like watching Dennis Bermuda's fight. Like, yeah. some guys are fighters. Some guys yeah. are going to fight all night. Diego gets that same kind of credit that Dennis does. But um, it does look like maybe his focus, maybe his eyes off the ball a little bit. You know, he changed camps, and now he's working on a new system, and it appears that he's still adjusting to that system and isn't totally comfortable with it. Oh, and even there, Chael, what system is he working on? Have you seen those videos? <laughs> He's not going there. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, just, just like like uh, 24 hours. Yeah, I saw it last night when I was laying in bed, yeah. Yeah. Come on, Diego. Go back to Jackson Wink or just go back to a gym. Not that guy. That guy doesn't seem like he's doing anything for him. We did get Diego on. He doesn't, he doesn't do interviews, I don't think. No. I went, uh, I went overseas with him, Chael, and he's – you know, it's me, Ashley Evan Smith, uh, I think uh, Tom Lawler. Tom Lawler and Diego, and he's doing like he's stretching in the airport with a band, and like you know, people are walking <laughs> by, like, what the fuck is this guy doing? But the thing is, is at first, because he had he had touched on 145 before we went on this trip, so like, I'm seeing him in the airport, like, yo, I'll fuck your ass up. Like, it's kind of one of those. And then I think he was talking about I could be the best at 170. I'm like, okay, and he like bought me like a little like. I'm like, you're right, my buck, dude. You know, I'm like, but the guys, he means well to everybody. He's a great guy. He's just a little ready for this. Here's a story. So it's three o'clock in the morning. We're in Iraq. And I hear movement on Diego's bunk bed and Tom's underneath. I'm like, I kind of look over. And I see like a black. It's very dark. We're in this like little you, you've done these overseas things, right? I'm like, man, is hang on, I I can't be seeing this. Diego is not on the ground with his foot on the top bunk stretching. It's three o'clock in the morning, so I just I just roll over, I go over, and, you know. Hey, Tom, was Diego stretching? Like, I don't know. Diego, were you stretching at three o'clock in the morning? Yep. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? Holy shit! Just. <laughs> That's really funny. I, I've also only kind of known him from a distance, you know, the ultimate fighter, and he he's a very interesting guy, but I've only had one face-to-face -face sit to where we really got to sit down and just be buddies, you know, no cameras or anything. He was like the, he was the most, awesome. he was great. Awesome. He was awesome. But then when, man, he kind of goes into a persona. I'm not sure that he's not secretly like a marketing genius, because when you just hang out with him versus the guy that's on camera, it's two different it, He's very level-headed. He he's great, but and then the camera comes on him, man. He's a showman. I, I I'm into Diego. Uh, uh, yeah, he, he's, he's got, got that. I love the guy. He, I really do. I'm fascinated. by He's it. got that infamous yes. That oh, yes. Yes. I know you're a big pro wrestling guy. That the guy Daniel Bryan built yes, his cartwheels. This a pro a pro wrestling guy built his whole gimmick on Diego Sanchez's walkout. Oh, that's sure. right. And it's he like, has own gif. Yeah, yeah, like, yep. Chael, you watch a little pro wrestling. Like, you've seen Daniel Bryan. He He's had the, the whole cross? arena. Do you remember when he came Dan out with the cross? Daniel Bryan used yeah. to train at uh, Extreme Couture. He was trained by Neil Melanson, so he he's a big MMA fan. So, yeah, he was influenced by that. That's true. Yeah, he saw Diego walk out and was like, yo, I'm going to steal this and see if it picks up. Oh, he knows what he's doing a and little bit. And it picked up yeah. hard. Yeah. I mean, I... That fight made me go back and watch. I went on YouTube because I remember saying to myself when I was younger, this is one of the dudes that like inspired me because he was a wrestler and whatnot and just seeing how nasty, how tough he was. Him and Josh like in the house and yeah. and and I watched his highlights and I was like I saw Tyson, man. Like he was a southpaw and he was ripping like lead uppercuts followed by lead hooks. He was t like his speed, his power, his willingness to get hit. It was like uncanny, and just watching the two guys now, the guy that is now and the guy that was, it's just so different. And I think that's why we talk the way we do now, and it sucks because he just he just got older and he had so many great fights. But I also don't think you should be inducted into the Hall of Fame until after you're done fighting. I yeah. agree with that. 
I mean, just on tradition, like I know right. there's no rule on that, but it does seem like something that needs to be done post facto. Like let the yeah. whole body of work go and then really recognize and honor a guy for the whole body of work. I agree with that. Right. Like even after they retire, like give it fucking 10 years where they can't be like, you know what? I'm back. I can do this. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm going back in. Yeah. Well, nah, even that's true. Chael, while we have you for another minute, um, we didn't talk about UFC 247 at all, so we'll ask one of the the gurus in MMA right now, one of the guys with the biggest shows. How did you score John Jones versus Dominic Reyes? Man, I listen. I had Reyes won the first three and lost the second two, and I'm kind of bullish on that. I, mean, I was pretty sure on what I saw, but I'm not crying foul ball. I will cry foul ball on the judge that gave John Jones four rounds mm. and Dominic only one. I believe that to be fiction. I believe that to be something that did not happen. But I don't think there was a screw job there. I thought that John Jones showed his absolute grit and toughness. I mean, whether I thought it was 3 2 Reyes, uh, you know, and, and two for Jones, either way, there was never a moment of that fight when John Jones ever stopped trying to win that fight. Even when John thought the chips were down and thought, I got to finish this guy, then he came out and tried to finish that guy. I mean, John Jones is a competitor. I really think deserves a lot of credit. And I personally don't get along with John Jones. It pains me to praise John Jones, <laughs> but that's what I saw, man. I saw a guy that wanted to win and tried to win for 25 minutes, and I respected it. Because I, I have, like, two things in my head. Like, one, you have to take the title from the champion. But then there's also the second – let's say the fight continued forever. Who would die first? Obviously, it's in John Jones' favor. He won four and five, like, no questions asked. So if it went six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way to fucking 25 – He's coming out of that cage, bro. He's coming out of that cage. Right? That, that's yes. a winner, bro. He's a winner. He's a winner. A lot winner. of people don't he like him. He just knows how to win. We've known him for a long time through wrestling. That guy knows how to win. He's always known how to win. He doesn't always know how to act, but he knows how to win. Now, He's the so fights tough. are getting closer between him and his opponents. He's for getting sure. older a little bit. Yes, I know. So like, Endless tape to study. Yes. Yeah. Endless tape well, to study. Well, there's that. Like, what's... Right? I talk, We had Doc uh, Parsons on, uh, I don't know, a month or two ago. He said, every fighter has so many rounds. You only have so many rounds. Yep. 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 I mean, I think his rounds no, are... I agree with that. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. No, I fully agree with that. Uh, do you guys still see me? I said that I cut out a little bit? It, yeah, there's it, no video now. It says you're poor. All right, it'll, it'll come back. I apologize. My wife no, is calling me. I'm, I'm sitting down. She's she's wondering why I'm not walking in the house yeah, for dinner. Hey, got I got to tell you guys this stuff. Dennis, you know the guys that we wrestled with, but they were like unbeatable, like a yes. four-time state yes. champion or the undefeated national, or the guy that won the Olympics. One thing those guys all have in common is their careers are over by the time they're 25 years old. Right. And it comes back to Doc's point. You only have so many rounds in you. You can only fire so many bullets and if you want to get it up every time and get it out early in college and have a bunch of those good for you. But you're probably not going to go very far in the pros and that just seems to be a reality. Whether it's fair or not, historically speaking, it does seem to be a reality. Yeah. Yeah. But when, when Doc said it it made so much sense for Oh me. my gosh. Yeah. I was like, yep, I used up all my rounds. <laughs> but now I'm like, you know what? Maybe I have like I don't know. 15 Maybe left you in me? refilled the chamber. Nah, and I know. sometimes that chamber yeah. does refill. That's true. Yeah. They talk about people in their primes, you know, and they always try to make it like the world belongs to 18 to 25 year olds. It's really mm. not true, Dennis. You and I know this, and Chris, you could agree as well. It's more of a mental prime. Right. When did I want it the most? When was I the yes. most motivated? What times in my life was I most excited to see the clock was three and I had to walk into practice versus going, oh boy, it's three o'clock. I better show up for practice because right. that's what I do. Yeah. And that's when you're in your prime. It's not when you're your fastest and strongest and youngest. It's when, when, are, when is this still exciting? Right. And nothing's exciting forever. That's the reality, and that's when the prime is gone. Yeah. It's it's hard. Think about how long he's been on top. How do you get up for every single fight? Sure. And this every single one of those guys are the, the cream of the crop, and they're trying to take what he has, and they're trying to take his head off, and he's got to get up every single time, and he's been doing this. I tell you what, partying, partying before a week before, he's the man, and, ex he, and, and he's celebrating the, man. the the you know the 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 victory before the fight. That's pretty, you know. Yeah, it makes it harder for you. Yep. But yes, Chael, yeah. we've had you for a minute. 
We appreciate the time. We'll let you get home Thank to the wife so and kids. Much. Yeah, you got but two wait, little two fellas. Little, real quick before we let you go, you got this huge event coming up this weekend. What is this? Submission Underground. What number are you at? Submit. Well, you know, we're at number 11. It's going to, and thank you for the plug. It's going to be Sunday. That is February 23rd, as in this Sunday. It is at 6 o'clock Eastern, live and free on Fight Pass. And by free, I mean as long as you paid for your subscription. <laughs> I'll be watching. You got a stud in Austin Vanderfort. You got Rage and Al. You got Mike Perry. What's that, the tag team main event again? All right, so we uh, Vinny is bringing Kyle Bain with him to take on Craig Jones and Nikki Rod. And, uh, yeah, all hell's going to break loose. And don't forget, Mike Perry's bringing his wife. We got the Platinum Princess making wow. her submission wow. underground debut. Don't forget about that one. Wow. Yes. Wow. I'm you, tuning in. You're the promoter, yeah. All right, fellas. I'm I've trying had so it much, with bro. you all. I'm I've had love it, it with you all. Kaboom. <laughs> See you, bro. Man. Oof. Y'all, I gotta, I'll be right back. You got to use a banya? Yeah. Tag team me in. We got to get used to this tag team action. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to talk when you get back. Wait, something I had in mind, you and Patrovich as a tag team. But we, we, we'd we have to find the opponent. Well, the thing is, I wanted to ask, Chael. I could also, you know, text him. I wonder I think how... Ch- wait, wait. I think Chael had a good time. One million percent. I think Chael would become a regular on our show. Yeah, one million percent. I think he had a good time. Man, who I didn't know Chael was such a Dennis Bermudez fan. He, I mean, my manager works very closely. Yeah, so you, Chael knew a lot about me without me. Say, yeah, Parsons even. is almost like his best friend or his co, you know, yeah. co-worker. They yeah. own Bad Guy Inc. together, and we've learned so much about that just having Parsons on. But, man, he was – like the way he said thank you for the promo, he was cutting promos on Menace. Like, what did he say? He, I feel like he fights like Dennis – Khabib fights like Dennis Bermuda. It was like he just keeps going. What he talking about? No, was he's talking Khabib? about Diego. No. Yes, he was, was talking Diego? about Diego. Yeah. I'll have to re-listen. Yeah. I, well, re-listen. I, I, I heard could be still a legend. Oh my God. Yeah. Who? Dennis Bermudez or no. Chael? Diego. Dennis Bermudez too.